lens window looking back into the laser and that window needs to get clean, cleaned occasionally if there's a lot of soot built up. Primary mirror? No, secondary, secondary mirror. mirror. Primary is in the housing behind, secondary mirror. And then this one on the head itself is a tertiary mirror. Mm -hmm. And then it comes down through the housing lens. itself. There's a lens, lens in the mirror. Okay. If they're only visibly dirty, you clean it. If they're not visibly dirty, you go the top and the bottom. And then out with the damp cloth and also clean the wheel bearings that travel on that. That's for the main carriage. And then also on the sides right here, down below. Your face right here, that little um, point right there is a manual focus tool. This is how to manually focus it. So we're going to go over our piece of material on the laser. That's going to move the red dot laser over the top of it. The red dot laser is only uh, a representation of the actual laser. You'll only see the red when the doors are open. So we're going to move the table down, putting our manual focus tool next to it. And we're going to move the tool down until we can put this flat edge against the laser carriage. Right there, in the corner. And then we're going to raise the table up until the tool tips back away from the laser carriage. There it is. And then back down so it goes flush again. And that is our two inch focus length. Okay. Oh, rather than just use a caliper to find the thickness of the material. Um, well, okay, so there's two things about that. One, it still needs to know the thickness of the material. Okay. Because you could have a fixture in there or something else. What we're doing is manually focusing to the top surface of our material. But we still have to tell it how thick the material is. Now that being said, we actually have the information for the thickness of whatever object that we've put in there. So this is saying that that CD case is uh, 0.521 inches tall. So that would be our material thickness if we tried to cut through. Okay. So we go into settings. Uh, we pick our material, which we, maybe we go with, um, maybe it's an ABS plastic case. And then we give it a material thickness of five, two, one. And that would be our material setting. Okay. So just to run one piece, that's manually doing it. That's manually in focus. If we want to autofocus, Um, if we're auto-focusing, we go into the System tab and select Auto-Z Enable. This is when we use the digital calipers when we select our material. So for instance, we'll say this is now a piece of quarter-inch wood. Uh, we go into our natural, we choose wood. Uh, we'll say it's a medium density fiber board. We put in our material thickness of the 2.5 that we got from the calipers. Click Apply and click OK. That means that when we start the job, the table will automatically move down so the top focus, or the, the focus is in the top of our quarter. So uh, create a new document, and then under that, you just select the VLS 360 laser as your template. Okay. And we're going to go into tools, tools, color management, default setting. And we're going to go down here to primary color mode. And we're going to change this to RGB. Okay. And click OK. That changes the whole global Corel draw into RGB color scheme. Okay. Okay. Um, so what I'm doing right now is I'm just going to create a box because I need a shape to show you. So we're going to create a red, RGB red. So we have RGB red. And I'm going to change this outline. This is the color width to what's called a hairline. This is the below the 0.001 inches that uh, it needs to see this as a vector cut line. So red hairline is a vector cut. Yes. Hairline blue is a vector engrave. Yes. Everything else is it's a raster engrave. And I'm going to hit print. Print. Uh, we're sending it to the VLS 360. I'm going to print the current document. Press OK. Just like a regular printer. And we're going to go over to the print driver. And now we see that we have a red outline, meaning it's going to be a vector cut line. Um, so what I wanted to show you here was when we have the focus tool, we can move the laser around and we have the red dot on the laser. If I want to move this object to where that red dot is, I can select one of the coordinates of it, 
or the center of it and tell it to go to pointer. That moves your object from whichever one of the coordinates you've selected to where the red dot is. Mm -hmm. And then you can, you can place a graphic or your vector cut line that way. You can also tell it specific coordinates to go to based on which of those points you've chosen. Okay. Uh, so if you have a jig that you know this is the template for your jig and you want to send it and your jig is sitting at like two inches by two inches, uh, but we'll select the upper corner there and we'll tell that to go to two inches. Then we know that this is the this is now zeroed to our jig, and whatever right. we have inside there is basically our machining area. Okay. Uh, we also have a duplicate view, so if we wanted multiples of an object, we can choose the distance between them, and just uh, do a raise inside of here. The only problem with moving or doing a raise inside of the print driver here, inside of the Universal Control Panel, is that it has no relation to your document template. When we moved it in the print driver, it is right. not related to your saved file. I understand that. So those are your, um, oh, and we also have an estimation tool. Once you select your materials and input its thickness, we can do an estimated time that the down. job will take. Like spiral. Um, there's, a, there's a symmetric spiral, and then there's the logarithmic spiral. I'm going to go ahead and create the logarithmic spiral. And then we're going to go and select the text tool right here. Click on that. We're going to move our cursor over it until the little A has a squiggly line and it says edge. And we're going to click on that and we're going to go ahead and type and it's going to follow the spiral. So as long as your text tool is selected, you could either create a text box or you could create, just start typing. So we got free right out in the middle of anywhere. You can create it inside of a box or we can add it to an edge. Beautiful. Create text or cut lines here to cut out. So we're just using the text tool to create the word danger. I'm going to go back to my select tool and then I'm going to right click on the object. Right click. And then I'm going to go up to convert to curves. And what's that done is, is taking the text and turning it into vector lines. And what I want to do is eliminate the fill so I don't want them to be filled with color. So I'm going to go over here to my color palette and I'm going to left click to change the fill to no fill. That's what this X means, no fill. And then I'm going to go down to my red and I'm going to right click to change the line color to red. And I now have a red hairline. So those are going to be cut lines and they're vector lines. So again, left click is a fill, right click is a outline. Left click is outline, right click is fill. Part off of Google, copied, pasting right in a corral draw. So there's our image. I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna go to an outline trace. We're gonna call it the logo. And we're gonna do specify color. And now what we have is a vector graphic. You can see instead of a bitmap, he's now a vector. And we're gonna click OK. Now we're going to drag this guy to the side, um, zoom in a little, and now what we can do is we can again uh, right click to, or left click to eliminate the fill, and left click to do a hairline outline, and now we have vector lines that can be our cut lines for the laser cutter. So then save this file as a DXF. And we can save this file as a DXF and use these as contour lines for CNC. So import it in the master cam and then you have to So we'll do lines. a file and we do a save as, and we go down to the file type as a DXF, and, then, and we name it, okay, oh, boy. oh, this is so cool. Save it, and now we have vector lines for CNC. Copy and pasted piece of it. So we're going to go into adjust, and we're going to desaturate the image. It's going to take us to a grayscale image. This is kind of more what the laser would be wanting to work with. We're going to go back into effects again. I'm going to do a uh, adjust uh, brightness, contrast, and intensity. So what we want to do, I want to see if we can bring this contrast up. Oh, that looks great. We might get okay results out of this. 
So we're bringing the contrast up and up so that different objects in here have a significantly different uh, burn pattern. Um, so we could give this a try. Click OK on Can you do that one more time? So it's effects. So we'll go into effects. And the first thing we did was went down into adjustments. Adjust. We desaturated it. Desaturated. And that brought it into black and white. Yeah. And then we went up to brightness, contrast, and intensity. Change that around until it looked. Change that around until. Auto Dance 1, 2, 3D, make. And you just open it up, it's free. You pull in your 3D model, whatever you created. Um, so the first thing we do is we go in and create a custom uh, bed size. So if, for your laser cutter, it's 12 by 24. So we'd want to have 12 by 24 sheets of material. So we create a custom one, a new one. It'd be 12, or uh, in this case, 24 by 12, whatever your material thickness might be. So we'll call it you know, 0.25 quarter inch wood. Um, the margins are just how much it leaves on the inside of each wood piece, so we'll leave some there. A tool, uh, slot, or a tool diameter would be the laser kerf, or if you were doing CNC, your tool. Uh, we're going to select nothing for right now. Done. So that's our material thickness, unnamed. Um, we then select, the, this is the object size, so you, you're just choosing how to scale your object. And then your construction technique. We could do stacked slices. And so this is going to give us a laser cut file for each of the individual slices. Just like 3D printing, it's going to slice the object, but in the thickness of our material for laser cutting. Um, we could do interlock slices, where we now have... Oh, isn't that cool? So this is showing us, and these are all different slices that interlock. And this is our template file over here on the right-hand side. So it would be one sheet, oh, and these okay. are our cut files. Are, are the, these are all vectors. These are all vectors. So I can just open this up in Mastercam and then run it. Yes. Um, there's different ways of saving it out. I believe it saves it all out as PDF. So you pretty much end up having to uh, open, you know, bring it in as an actor file. Um, interlock slices, yeah, these are curved. Um, so just a different kind of perspective on uh, the direction. Uh, radial slices, so it chooses the uh, center axis and then rotates around it. So you could turn this into like a turntable, you know, CD storage thing. Um, folded panels is doing the outer layers of it. So this is kind of like reducing the number of polygons. You could do things like masks. So you could slice it and then assemble it. And you can, you can choose how many of those you have so you can increase the detail. Uh, 3D slices. Um, gives you the same type of slices that you had in the first one except that it actually has a contour on the outside so if you were to machine this it would do a lot of machining on the outside to achieve that but you'd have a more true shape for your full head and that's one two three d make